G'day, baby dickheads, the vaping fucking bogan. Back once again. How the fuck are you? Hope you're all doing swell. Got ourselves another installment in our Mech Fest. If you don't know what the fuck Mech Fest is, it's just a week we're going to spend on Mech Tubes. Mechanical tube mods are making a bit of a resurgence. So I felt it was necessary to do a bit of, you know, focus and a bit of education on mechanical tubes. So the next one in our set of uh, mechs is the Coil Art Mage Tricker Kit. All right, this is the black version. It's a copper tube. It's been coated in black. Comes with a little Mage RDA and the Mage Mech Tube. And they've also got this lovely acrylic version as well. We've got some funky colors going on on this side here. It comes with a gold version of the um, Mage RDA, just like this one. I've got the Troll RTA on here though. Um, anyway. Let's take them for a fucking burn, shall we? Got some alien coils in here from Cloud Revolution. 0.11 ohms, I think it is. See how they go. The copper one, blah, blah, blah. the copper one definitely hits fucking hard. Some very low voltage drop going on here. Really, really nice performance from that one. And then we've got the acrylic version, which has got a brass, um, you know, tube with a, an acrylic um, sleeve around it. We've got uh, the same coils going on in here. Some aliens from Cloud Revolution. 0.11, I think. Not quite as punchy as the copper version. Some people probably won't even be able to tell the difference, but anybody who's used copper and brass tubes will probably notice that there is a slight better performance from the black one. But anyway, dear kids, before we get into more of this, quick mention on the advocacy. I know I harp on about it every single fucking video, but every single fucking one of you cunts should be advocating your fucking asses off. Because if we don't, the powers to be, the governments, the corporations that, uh, you know, basically make money from big tobacco and cigarettes are going to shut this shit down. So please go to the description, have a look. There's some advocacy stuff on um, the FDA fight in the States. There's a bunch of shit on my own fight here in South Australia. There's also obviously battles happening in Europe. So please, I don't care where you are, do your bit. Fucking kick a poly. All right, beer time. You know I love a brew. Every video we've got to have a fucking bevo, and uh, today is no different. We have a Golden Road Saison. A Golden Road Saison uh, Pamplemousse. Pamplemousse, or whatever the fuck that means. Uh, it is made in Los Angeles. It is 5.8% alcohol. It's a grape fruity fucking saison, apparently. Let's fucking get into it. A slightly over-aggressive pour from the Bogan. Uh, we got a fair bit of fucking head happening there. You got that sort of pale, yellow, sort of murky complexion. Lots and lots of fucking bubbles, so I'm expecting plenty of effa fucking vessels. Let's see how she tastes. Or we'll smell first. Oh, it smells very much like a very tropical IPA to me. I'm getting a lot of grapefruit and tropical fucking uh, fruits there. Very, yeah, tropical IPA kind of pale ale sort of smell. Fucking cheers. That is fucking grapefruity. Not a lot of sour note though. I'm getting grapefruit, but I'm not getting the sour notes that I normally kind of get from a Saison. It's sour, but it's not Saison sour, if you know what I fucking mean, cunts. It should be making my, uh, my, my lips sort of... But not getting a lot of that sourness. Really, really nice grapefruit flavor. Some pineapples and maybe a bit of passion fruit, some other sort of tropical fruits in there, but lots and lots of grapefruits. If you like grapefruit in like a light sort of effervescent beer, really, really nice, clean, crisp grapefruit from this. Very, very clean and crisp. Pretty light kind of feeling, but lots of flavor. Feels very lightweight, but it feels like there's lots of flavor there, which is, you know, really nice. A lot of your sort of light beers or they don't feel too heavy, lacking the flavor. This has got heaps of grapefruit, heaps of nice sort of tropical notes. But um, at the same time, feels very, very thin and light. Anyway, let's pair her up with a juice. Uh, I got myself a bit of Everest here. One of my favorites from Alpine Cloud Co. Uh, an Australian brew or juice, I suppose. Anyway, see how she goes. It is a, a raspberry lemonade. Should I fucking tell you the flavor profile, shouldn't I? Fucking wanker. Uh, yeah, raspberry lemonade, delicious. Oh yeah, 
That works so well. The flavors aren't really mixing all that much. They're both kind of light flavors, but you get a really nice raspberry lemonade with the vape and then bam, grapefruit. Just such a nice pairing. Fuck yeah. That is definitely a fucking 10 out of 10 pairing. Absolutely loving that. Grapefruit, raspberry lemonade. Fucking beautiful. Anyway, dear kids, we've harped on long enough. Let's get in the up and bloody close. All right, jump down, have a squeeze. We're going to check out both of these. Um, they have some slight differences in the way that they're designed, the switch mainly, um, and all of that, and the way that the, the battery is adjusted for rattle. So we'll check all of that out. We'll give you the pros and cons and price after that. Let's have a squeeze. All fucking right, dear kids. So here we go with the Mage Tricker kit. So they've got the acrylic version with uh, brass and acrylic, and then you've got the copper version, which is uh, all sort of black coated. So we'll have a quick look at both of them. Let's uh, see what we fucking get. All right, so in the box, we've got the tube, we've got the Mage RDA, we've got a bag of spares, we've got uh, a vape band in there, some spare magnets for the switch, um, some spare grub screws, O-rings, um, a little Phillips head screwdriver for your RDA. A little mech warning, which is good about mechanical mods like that. And then we've got the RDA and the mod. So here we have the acrylic version. Very fucking pretty to look at. Beautiful green and red, a bit of yellow all thrown in there. Don't know what the uh, little star up the top here is all about, but uh, there you go. And a matching, well, somewhat matching acrylic button. Unfortunately, it looks like they've kind of just grabbed any old green piece of acrylic and bunged it in here for the button because it doesn't really match with the rest of it. There's no snot green anywhere else, but they've tried. All right, so the RDA, Mage RDA, we'll come back to that in a second. Let's just quickly grab the stuff out of the black one. You get all the same spares and uh, goodies. You've just got the black copper version and the matching black RDA. Everything else is the same, except it didn't get magnets with the spare magnets with the black one for some reason. All right, so we've got the acrylic, we've got the black copper. Uh, the black copper is, you know, copper, then it's been sort of coated in um, sort of that rough, almost sandpapery kind of feeling. Um, Cerakote maybe kind of uh, finish to it. It's very similar to the V-God in its finish. Very, very similar in terms of uh, feel and look. And they've even kind of copied the whole V-God, you know, logo, copper logo sort of thing with their coil art design. But some other differences in there. Top cap's very much the same. It's a one piece molded all out of one block of copper. Designed by Coil Art in California, Mage. Hybrid top cap. So remember, dickheads, if you're using hybrid mech mods, make sure your pin, your 510 pin, is protruding from the threaded section properly. Let's break these two down and see how they're sort of made up. Now, the brass version has got a threaded top cap. Unscrew the top there. There you go. All brass. Very nice. There you go. The inside of the sleeve has got one of these plastic liners, which is great for a bit of extra safety in case your battery wrapper has a tear in it. Um, you can't um, take the sleeve of acrylic off. It's all sort of fitted um, to the brass sleeve. So you've got a brass sleeve with the acrylic over the top of it. And this acrylic is really nice. It is pretty fucking uh, flashy looking. 24 millimeters in diameter. I forgot to mention earlier, dickheads. 24 millimeters uh, for both the RDA and the mod. Let's have a look at the switch. Now, the switch on these is similar but slightly different for some reason. I'm not sure why um, they've gone with a, a different sort of switch. So they both look similar, but they do work slightly differently. The black one has a self-adjusting spring Delrin piece in there uh, to take up any battery slack. Okay, whereas the uh, the brass one does not, doesn't have anything there at all, which is a little bit odd. Um, both of them, you unscrew the base to fire it. Obviously, when you've screwed that in, you won't be able to fire it, it's locked. So that's how that sort of works. The copper one does have an adjustment as well, though. That's the thing, is you can adjust the throw by this extra pin in here. So unscrew that. There you go. 
extra um, sort of adjustment there to shorten or lengthen the throw because obviously as you wind out that copper pin um, the distance that it has to travel to reach the bottom of your battery gets shorter so that's a neat little feature that they've done there but they didn't do it on the um, the brass one or the uh, acrylic one we can obviously take both of the switches apart to get to the magnets if we want to clean them and all of that sort of stuff so if we wind and wind and wind out pops that one you've got a magnet in here very nice, very strong, very, very strong magnets. And another opposing one in this end here. Pretty simple. You've got um, some vent holes in the bottom of the switch there. And there is your contact, which as you can see, that sort of extra bit of adjustment there to shorten or lengthen the throw. All copper, the contact, so great for conductivity. That just slots in there. And being a triangle, the cool thing about it is it's not gonna um, you know, unwind. However, with this design, whoa, there we go, very strong magnets as you can see. So the way the switch is put together is quite similar to the Avid Life switches in that you unwind the switch to unlock it and then you wind it back in whoop, to, lock it, to lock it up again. Um, so if you do wind this switch out too far, you know, the whole switch comes apart. So just be aware of that. It's much like the Avid uh, Life design, the Comp Life designs. All right, so the brass switch doesn't have that battery uh, adjustment in there. It's just basically, you know, the a simple unwind it, fire it. If we keep unwinding it, it takes the whole switch apart. And I did find something kind of uh, odd when I opened up the switch. You've got these uh, magnets in there, similar design to the other one. Uh, however, when you look at the magnets in the bottom, they've uh, they've added these two extra you know, magnets, thin magnets here, to ones that are big one. Uh, they included some extra spares as well of, uh, of the same of those two thin magnets. So I'm not sure whether they've just, you know, thought of this afterwards and thought, ah, oh, the switch isn't stiff enough because I took those two thin magnets out and without those in there, the throw is very, very sloppy, very, very uh, squishy. So they may have just wanted to add a couple of extra uh, magnets to kind of stiffen the whole thing up. But yeah, it's really odd. Um, that they've got those extra magnets in there and no adjustment for battery rattle on the tube. Now this contact here looks like it could be maybe silver plated um, copper doesn't say anywhere what the materials are but uh, yeah now the problem I have with this design is there's no adjustment for battery rattle um, with uh, with a spring like they do in the black one so let's go and chuck our, uh, our battery in here all right Screw our atomizer on first. Make sure he's screwed in there. Screw the top down. All right, so we've got our battery. We insert our cap, our button, and we're left with this fucking huge gap. What the hell is that about? I don't understand why they've gone without any adjustment. Really, this tube needs to be, you know, another four or five mils longer, and then they need to have a Delrin. Um, adjustable you know spring plate in this switch here so that you can actually um, you know take up all of that slack because it's just the tubes not long enough and then there's no adjustment so you're walking around with a fucking big gaping gap there don't understand it and this is the atomizer that it comes with so you know it's not like I'm using another Addy with a really really long 510 pin this is the mage um, Addy so yeah, that for me is the biggest con, is this switch design and the brass one is just fucking dumb. Um, it also has quite a bubble or a con um, vex shape to this uh, piece of acrylic. So you put it down, and look, the fucking thing, the fucking thing wobbles all over the place. What is that about? The fuck coil art, Jesus. Anyway, let's move on to the RDA. Now, the RDA has got very, very stiff o-rings oh, and they're quite uh get quite stuck on these uh air slots anyway dickheads it's a uh, pretty simple basic design it's got posts very similar to a glacier 3 from vapors cloud with the two holes sitting next to each other which is great for inserting your coils you don't twist or distort your wires super fucking deep juice well have a look at that juice well you're talking about there is seven mils deep so lots and lots of space for your juice tsunami kennedy style undercoil airflow sort of milled straight out of the deck uh, looks like your center posts um, have been sort of slotted in there and uh, yeah fucking pretty easy to build on very deep juice well top cap 
pretty well machined. One thing I did notice is it feels like there is a clear coating on the brass uh, version. On the black version, it's got the same sort of uh, matte, slightly texturous finish as the uh, black mod. Um, you've also got a bit of coil art engraving there. Same with this one, coil art engraved there. But yeah, definitely a clear coat over the top of this. And I'm pretty sure a clear coat over the brass on um, the mod itself as well. So you can obviously adjust the airflow via your Cyclops and uh, you have got the single coil option there as well as dual coil. So look, a drip tip I do like is a uh, that it's a, a Goon Kennedy style drip tip so you can fit your Goon Kennedy drip tips in there which is fucking brilliant, very bloody nice. Uh, let's check out the build that I had sitting in the black one. So these are some Cloud Revolution coils. These are the Game Over Man Triple 27s. So they're 327 gauge uh, N80 cores with a 36 gauge uh, alien fused wrapping in uh, N80 as well. 2.5 millimeter inner diameter and uh, they came in around about 0.11 ohms. Very, very nice. You can see sitting them straight over the top of that airflow. Pretty damn decent flavor out of this one as well, I have to say. So we've got the black one. I've chucked a battery in there. As you can see, there's no ugly gap down the bottom here because there's the self-adjusting Delrin plate there. You can obviously undo your switch to fire it. Very nice. You don't need to undo it by much if you've uh, adjusted that second copper pin to give you a short throw. So it's really nice how uh, you can actually get in there and change the throw so it's either short or long for you. Um, that's about it, dickheads. You know, it's uh, a solid copper, uh, red copper tubing, I believe, with, um, you know, a copper contact and a hybrid connection. So this one here definitely has quite good performance, low voltage drop. So, dickheads, I don't know whether there's a whole lot more to say about these two. You know, I don't understand why they've gone with two different switch designs. Why wouldn't they use the same self-adjusting system that they have in the black one uh, as you know, in the acrylic one? Because this is just fucking stupid, um, considering it's a nice acrylic, you know, pretty mod. And then they've got this ugly gap here and no way to fix it. Um, I could somehow understand it if maybe it was a different atomizer that, you know, had a long 510 pin, but this is the one that comes in the kit, and yeah. Anyway, dickheads, let's jump back up top. Let's give you the pros, the cons, the price, and everything fucking else. So there you fucking go, dickheads. Close-up squiz, a couple of coil art mechs. As you can see, look, there's some really nice things about it. Some things I think they definitely could have redone, but overall, a pretty comprehensive kit. You know, and some pretty fucking nice looking devices. You know, the um, acrylic sleeve version, very fucking pretty to look at. If you're not into colors and, uh, you know, acrylics, you know, matte black, copper, looks fucking uh, pretty badass. Very similar to the V-God, I suppose, the black version. So if you're a fan of that look, then, um, you know, this one here, right up your fucking alley. So, dickheads, performance. The black version, very fucking good performance. I have to say, voltage drop, you know, I don't have anything to test this sort of stuff accurately, so I'm just going on, you know, my comparison from one mod to another. But the black copper version is a fucking cunt puncher. Very, very fucking low voltage drop, very hard hitting, um, you know, quick, very nice. No hot button, really like the performance from the black one. Not to say that the brass isn't as fucking, uh, you know, nice. It doesn't hit quite as hard, obviously, just being um, a brass construction, you know, no copper anywhere on there. So, obviously, that is at play. But it's still very fucking good at performance, you know. Very, very hard hitting. Certainly compared to my other brass mods, my other hard hitting brass mods, um, this one is, is not lagging um, by much at all. So... Performance-wise, both of them hit pretty fucking well. The RDAs, you know, performance, it's basically a tsunami, you know, to put it bluntly. It's got a different uh, post configuration in terms of where your holes are situated, but the way that the airflow is um, is done, the juice well, you know, the, the top cap, you know, very much like a tsunami in, in terms of flavor and clouds. Maybe, nah, not really any more airflow. It's um, it's about the same. It's wider um, on the outlet, but um, you know it thins out the airflow to basically the same size as the fucking tsunami. So 
very much like a tsunami. Let's talk about the fucking pros though and the fucking cons, dickheads, because there's definitely a few of each to both of these. So let's talk about the black one first and then we'll talk about the brass acrylic version. Both of them have different pros and different cons. So the black version, I really like the finish on it. The the matte, um, you know, it's got some texture to it. The matte sort of finish they've gone with here. I'm not sure exactly what this is. I'm sure some smart ass will remind me of the fucking term. Um, but it's got like a real texture to it. It almost feels like a, a, a smooth sandpaper um, in, in its um, sort of finish. Uh, but it seems to be pretty fucking durable and sort of very similar to what you have on the V-God. Uh, so I like the, the finish on it. Um, I like the performance, as I said. The copper definitely fucking hits pretty damn hard. I like the self-adjusting, um, you know, battery spring there. So it takes up the battery slack. But I also like that you can adjust the firing pin. You've got a two-piece firing pin, which allows you to adjust for throw. So if you like a short throw, excusez-moi, you can wind that pin out, give yourself a shorter throw. If you like a longer throw, then you can, uh, you know, keep that pin wound right in give yourself less, uh, more travel for the switch. So that's definitely a nice fucking pro there. Um, personally, I like patinas and, you know, the changing of metal with my copper mods. But for some people, the fact that the Coil Art logo on there has been clear coated um, could be, you know, a bit of a pro in that it's not going to patina, it's not going to go brown, it's not going to change color on you, you're not going to get green on your fingers. So for some people, that might be a pro. For me, probably more of a con. I can kind of feel the... Um, the raised acrylic sections that have been covered on the coil art. I don't really like that, but definitely could be a pro for some people. It's a complete kit, so you get an RDA and you get a tube. Uh, that, for me, is a, is a pro. It gives you everything you need. If you're looking at getting into mechanical devices, you know, and you don't have an RDA, maybe you've been using sub tanks and shit like that, having a complete kit there is definitely a nice little fucking feature. Um, let's talk about the RDA, pros and cons there. Um, Pro, it does single and dual coil, so that's nice. Um, it has the uh, the Goon Kennedy size drip tip, so I could put, you know, any of my custom drip tips on there if I want to have it looking a little fucking swanky. There you go, how's that? Bit of purple fucking nurple. So that's a pro. The gold-plated deck, definitely love that. Big, big pro for me. Um, I like the four holes in a row deck design. The, the posts where they've got, much like the um, Glacier V3 from Vapors Cloud, it has two holes parallel to each other um, on each side of the posts, and so that means inserting your coils, you don't twist your Claptons and your flat wires, they sit nice and flat on the bottom of the, um, the hole, and then you're clamping straight down. So that's definitely a fucking pro for me. Um, deep juice well. The juice well's fucking huge on this cunt. Fucking massive. So I love the juice well. Lots and lots of fucking uh, liquid in there. Um, they haven't painted the inside of the RDA, so I do like that. It's stainless steel on the inside there. That's a nice little pro ski. I think that's all in terms of the, um, the pros for the RDA. Let's talk about some cons on the kit. Um, first con for me, and it comes back to, we'll, we'll talk about the brass set. We'll keep them separate. We'll keep them separate. Keep it easy. So cons with the black one. Um, I'm not a fan of this switch design. Okay, it's similar to things like, um, you know, the AV mods, the Ables, the Avid Life, and the Comp Life, those sort of switches where the whole bottom of the mod is the switch, okay? There's not a recessed button. The whole bottom of the mod is the button. So you've got to unwind it to fire it. Um, and then wind it in to lock it. There's a pro there that it has a locking feature. So let's go back, put that in the pro section. But the con for me is there's movement, there's play um, between the, the, the whole switch. So I can kind of feel that as I'm pushing it. Just doesn't, I don't know, personally, again, this is more of a subjective con. I don't really like the way that there's movement in the switch there. Um, I also don't like the fact that um, the switch spins on me. So as I, as I press it, I can feel the switch moving on me, particularly with the black one. It's very, very smooth. It's very light, which is good in one way. And the threads are very, very buttery smooth, but they're almost too smooth for this locking ring. There's a lot of spinning there as I hit the as I hit the button. 
So personally, I'm just not a fan of this switch design. I have an Able, I love my Able, but I'm not a fan of the switch on the Able and I'm not a fan of the switch on this one. That's just me personally. Um, another another pro I forgot to mention was the self-adjusting uh, battery rattle. That's definitely a massive pro for me. Um, but getting back to the cons, um, I think that's probably the extent of my cons with the black version. It's really just that the whole bottom of the switch is the, the of the mod is the switch, and there's a bit of movement there. It spins very easily. But apart from that, I don't really have any major issues with the mod. The only other con that I have with the RDA is the O-rings. The O-rings are fucking shit. Um, when it's dry, it's bloody impossible to get the top cap off. The O-rings stick out quite far and they get caught on the airflow ring, uh, sorry, the airflow cutouts on the bottom of the top cap. So as you're trying to pull it off, if you don't have any juice on there, it's very stiff. Um, and I also noticed that as I push my top cap down, you might have seen it then, juice just fucking spurted out. Uh, I've got juice all around the bottom. You can see there, all around the bottom of the top cap. The O-rings, they're just, to put it bluntly, uh, fucking coil art. The, the O-rings on this RDA are fucking just rubbish. They're just rubbish. They don't fit properly. They allow juice to get down as you push the top cap over, uh, and they're too tight when you don't have juice on there. It, it's just, there's nothing about these O-rings that I fucking like. <laughs> So I think that about wraps it up for the cons on the black version. Let's talk about the brass acrylic version because it is almost a different mod because it has a different switch design. Uh, you don't have that adjustability on the switch, so you can't change the throw long or short. You don't have any self-adjusting um, battery rattle um, you know, function there. It, it screws in and you're pretty much always, and it didn't matter what RDA I put on here unless it was a really short 510 pin, you end up with a gap. And if you don't end up with a gap, if you've got a short 510 pin, you can actually end up with battery rattle. You don't have any fucking adjustment for for that battery rattle. I, I don't understand how Coiler decided to produce a mod that had no real adjustment for battery rattle. Like, virt like nothing, apart from screwing the switch in. And wherever that switch lands, in terms of uh, when it meets the battery, is, is where you're left. So... You know, I've got the, the fucking troll RTA on here and I've still got a gap there. And that's quite a short 510 compared to some of the others I've been using. I've had bigger gaps. So, fuck, it just, the switch doesn't have the adjustability for throw. It doesn't have any battery rattle adjustment. To be honest, the switch on this one is very poorly designed. It's not really well thought through. It, it's kind of just like, yeah, fuck it, there'll be a gap there, whatever. So, um, let's talk about some of the other cons and then we'll get into the pros on the brass version. The other con that I have and I kind of mentioned in the up and close is the, the acrylic used in the switch. Um, firstly, it's, it's convex, so it actually bubbles out from the bottom of the mod, which means that... You see that? You see how it wobbles? See how it wobbles around? That's because it's fucking, you know, it's not flush. It's not flat on the bottom there. And that shits the fuck out of me because it doesn't matter whether my switch is locked or unlocked. I have wobble when I put it down on something. Bananas as to why the hell that would be okay. There's nothing else I can really find here, you know, in terms of major cons other than there is some difference in the, um, the, the diameter of the acrylics. So the very top cap, and I didn't talk about this in the up and close, the, the very top cap of acrylic is slightly wider than the acrylic middle section. So there's just just some overhang really, and it's just not, you can tell the difference between this acrylic tube and this acrylic tube, okay? This is El Diablo made in the Philippines, you know, it costs you about a hundred bucks. Uh, and the acrylic is perfectly, seamlessly fucking flush with the mod. You know the metal bra, uh, the the gold sections on the um the samo the the shiva. This you can just tell the difference. So you know if you like acrylic, it's a nice acrylic mod. But if you really like a high quality acrylic mod, you can definitely tell the difference between this fucker and something from El Diablo or you know um, the other acrylic you know high end um, tubes out there. Let's talk about the pros with the uh, brass acrylic version. It is pretty. The acrylic. It's, it's really nice. The acrylic is very shiny, it's very glossy, it's very bright. 
Um, so I do really like the acrylic that they've used here. I cannot fault the material there. It is, it's lovely to look at. The brass, I think, has had a clear coat on it, so it could be a pro for some, is that it's not gonna patina, it's gonna stay nice and shiny, but it could be a con for others that like the brass patinaing. Um, the fact that they have actually gone with an acrylic switch as well as the acrylic sleeve, that's a nice touch. I would like it a lot fucking more if the acrylic actually matched the same acrylic used on the, the sleeve, because as you saw in the up and close, they are two different acrylics. There's like a snot green on the bottom here, and there's no snot green on the sleeve. So, and there's blue in there, and there's no blue on the sleeve. So they haven't matched the acrylic properly, but I do like that they have gone with acrylic on there. This one may be a silver-plated contact on the switch, which does contribute, obviously, to better voltage transfer. So if it is silver-plated, the, the, the actual pin in the switch, that's definitely a pro, but I can't be sure that it is silver-plated. It doesn't say anywhere, I don't think. Um, if it does, apologies for not fucking doing my research. But yeah, it's um, it's got some pros, but it has some pretty annoying cons. And to be honest, I probably wouldn't go out and buy the acrylic version, um, mainly because it doesn't. It just wobbles. It wobbles, and I've got gap. I've got a gap there. So I was kind of disappointed in the acrylic. Let's come back to the fucking black. I love it. It's really nice. Very affordable. Very good performance. And um, you know, it's it's nice. Let's talk about the price though, dickheads, because they all cost money, and these have a fucking tag. These were sent to me directly from um, Coil Art, so fucking cheers for passing these on for the purpose of review. No, it doesn't change my opinion. As you can see, I tell you what's fucking what, and what's a bit fucking crap. They are selling uh, on Coil Art's website the black version for $76 and the acrylic version for $86, which is far too much. Coil art, you need to fucking take that price down. You need to halve that fucking shit. Seriously, the fucking Shiva is only just over a hundred dollars. Um, with you know, with no RDA, but it's just over a hundred bucks. Um, and the fucking machining and finish and the acrylic and everything are just shit all over the acrylic version that you have. So you need to bring these down. Um, come on, it's just eighty six dollars. Get the fuck out of here. However, dickheads, 86 bucks is not the price that you have to pay. I have seen these going on a whole bunch of different other websites for far less. So you can pick them up from some of the Chinese distributors like Fast Tech and Gear Best for around about the $40 mark. Um, I think it was, yeah, $41 was the cheapest I saw it um, on a Chinese distributor. Uh, black or, or acrylic. In the UK, you're looking at around about 50 fucking pounds, which is, again, very affordable for a kit, pretty comparable to the um, Tsunami kit that you see from Geek Vape, and you're getting basically the same stuff, an RDA and a tube. Here in Australia, they have fucking made it to our market, which is nice. Uh, I've only found one or two websites selling them for around about $65 Australian. 65 bucks Australian is a very fair price for this kit. Um, especially considering Coil Art are uh, trying to sell them for $86 US. Get the fuck out of here. What are you doing? Do you not look at other websites? You make the damn thing. Like, you don't have a wholesale, like, I don't. The manufacturers, come on, why are you charging more than the resellers? Uh, it just doesn't, doesn't compute. <laughs> anyway, cunts. At $40 US and 50 pounds, I think that this kit, the black version, certainly is a very good buy. Um, you know, bar the switch, which is not my cup of tea, but maybe other people's cup of teas. As I said, the switch is a subjective thing. I personally don't like it. But I think for what you're getting in terms of performance, a, a nice, well-performing RDA, good build quality, you know, the black one has some great adjustments in the, um, the switch for, you know, throw and things like that. You can't, you know, you can't really complain too much for, for 40 or 50 bucks. So I'll put some links in the description to a few different websites selling these, both in China and um, the UK and here in Australia, if you want to pick one up. I think that about wraps it up though, dickheads. Uh, we will obviously have a few more mech tubes over the next couple of days to round out our... Mech Fest. 
I'll put some links in the description to where you can support the channel. If you want to check out my Instagram and Facebook, there's obviously a day-to-day -day, um, sort of updates on what I'm fucking doing. If you really want to support the channel, though, keep me doing what I'm doing independently. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Go to the little uh, subscribe icon to make sure you turn on notifications because YouTube are a bunch of fucking nitwits and people aren't getting notified when I upload a video or any other YouTubers for that matter. But um, obviously uh, what I do does take a lot of fucking time. So if you want to uh, really, really keep me doing what I'm doing independently, hit the Patreon link and pledge a buck or two each month. Keep me going at it. And obviously Bogan Brews juice is always available to sub on me fucking dick off or your fucking tits off. So I'll put links to all of that shit in the description. Above all though, cunts, stay off the fucking stinkies. That's what we're here for. It doesn't matter whether it's a cheap mech tube or uh, a cheap Chinese regulator device or a high-end fucking mod. As long as you're not punching durries, that is all that fucking matters. We'll be back very fucking soon with plenty more mech tubes. You cunts, have a bloody good one. Cheers for tuning in. Cheerio. <laughs>